Ashland is a unique town. There's no two ways about it. It's 21,000 people living out on the far western fringe of the United States, and it has attracted unusual and innovative people for 100 years. We feel at home here. People are so friendly. They say hi when you walk down the street. We kind of take that for granted. Ashland has lots of people in the arts. The weather is gorgeous. We're a little bit up in the mountains. It's, it's just, it's a place where you feel happy to be. So we are a little town and we're a cosmopolitan town at the same time. Ashland is a relatively affluent community. And yet we have members of our community that are hungry. And it's not just the homeless or the street people that are hungry. It's seniors on a fixed income. It's single parent households. And it's the working poor. And fortunately, we have the Ashland Emergency Food Bank to help alleviate that hunger. We know that the people who are coming in here are in tremendous need to make it through the month. If they're willing to come here and walk through that door, we're going to help them. And we're not going to make any judgments about why they are here. We are trying to keep people from falling into homelessness. We always stress it's Ashland Emergency Food Bank. You know, so for people, it's a big, huge deal coming in here. We get a lot of the elderly, and then all the things that happen as you get older, money issues, right, health issues. We get people with mental distress, and by that I mean people who may not be able to get jobs because they have whatever the problem might be. What I hear more often is their food stamps for now. They come in, you know, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're desperate in some way or another. Yeah, the food banks just kind of help keep us afloat and healthy. About 25% of the individuals we serve are children under the age of 18, and we have a particular concern about those kids because we know that good nutrition means everything. When a child is growing, it fuels emotional and physical health. Um, so it's really critical to us that we, are, we have enough food for those children. If there weren't food banks here, there'd be a lot of hungry people. It would probably put us in a state of crisis. Every day we have families lining up at our door waiting for us to open up. We start giving that food away and it goes out the door and in the carts with local families. So there's a constant churn here of the food leaving the food bank. At times the demand has really stretched our resources. Um, we've used up all our back inventory, we really struggled. We see food flying off the shelves and there's, I have to say, a sense of panic. Where is it going to come from? How are we going to find it? dramatically with the introduction of the Ashland Food Project. The Food Project was started by a group of folks in the community who really wanted to be involved in addressing the issue of hunger on a regular periodic basis in the community. They came up with the idea of what I call the magic green bags. I had six-year-old twin boys. One day after Christmas there was an article in the newspaper saying there was a lot of food that had been given around Christmas and you know the holidays, but then after everybody forgets about that, the shelves get empty again and then they don't have any way of getting food. So I explained about how some people don't have enough food and they were fascinated by that. And they said, well, let's go around the neighborhood and collect some food. So they were going down the street with their little red wagon and knocking on people's doors and asking if they would contribute some food. In 1998, I had, had back problems and I was lying in bed one day and feeling really like, you know, what would happen if my back kept me from really walking again? And I wondered if, if, if I lived a life that's satisfying enough, there's anything I need to do. And to my surprise, a sort of voice came into my head that said, you need to feed people. So as a family, we decided to make a contribution on a regular basis instead of just at Christmas. And so I got an operation, it was no problem, but I realized that things keep changing and you could never count on anything. And if I was gonna do this project, I was gonna do it now. So we decided we were gonna put something every week in a bag and then once in a while, bring the whole bag in. And then one night I was lying in bed and I, and I thought, wait a minute, this is, that, that's a really easy thing to do. 
And uh, I, I know a lot of people that would do that, that would be willing to do that. So the next day I got up, I wrote a letter and sent out 50 emails to people I knew all around Ashland and said, here's what we're going to do. And uh, you might want to consider doing it too because the food bank needs a consistent supply of food, not just at Christmas. And amazingly, out of those 50 people, 42 wrote back and said, I'll do that. Wow. And I was just blown away by how much enthusiasm there was around it. So I got this idea that maybe we could pick up food directly from people. That would be a way to get the food from our, our homes, you know, people like us who have enough food to share and will be willing to do it but get that food directly to the food banks. Originally when I sent out that email to the 50 people, um, I said, I will make it even easier for you. I'll come and get it. Uh, right around that time, I got a call from this guy named John Jabna. He called and said, hey, I heard about what you're doing. It sounds a lot like what I'm trying to get going. So he and I were kind of on the same track thinking about the same thing without knowing about it almost at the exact same time and when we did our first pickup with the large group and I can't remember a couple thousand pounds or something it was so exhilarating it just made so much sense and it seemed like oh, how, how did this not happen before <laughs> I mean there, there was a food bank in Ashland for 45 years and they had no regular source of food coming in for all those years they'd have these random food drives here and there they get a a barrel of food or something. But now every two months, they know they're in Ashland, they're gonna get about 20,000 pounds of food. And they can plan and budget around that now. That's, a, that's basically how the food project got going. And then we started coming up with a strategy about how to break it down into neighborhoods so that we could get the whole city involved. And people who were more enthusiastic could then get other people in their neighborhood to get enthusiastic about it. So we had this model of creating neighborhoods with sort of a central person in that neighborhood. And that's how the neighborhood coordinator was born, just organic. It's one thing to knock on people's doors and say, hi, you know, we're gonna be back in two months and, and to have them remember it, you know, and, and have them even take you seriously. But if you give them something that shows it's official and shows that it's formal, they know you're coming back for it, then, then it's, a, it's sort of a contract. It's an agreement. Okay, I'm gonna give you this bag. It proves that I mean this thing. You take the bag, it means you're going to put some food in it. So when I come back, and you know I am going to come back, then I expect to see that bag out there. So the concept with the green bags is that people who want to participate in the community are given a green bag. It's just a non-throwaway bag. And the idea is every week when they go to the grocery store, they pick up one extra item, throw it in the bag, and at the end of two months, they've got eight or ten items on, in their bag. The bag then gets placed on the front porch, and a neighborhood coordinator, someone who lives nearby, comes around and picks up all of those green bags and brings them to the food bank. Now what that means to us is overwhelming. Uh, all of a sudden on a Saturday morning as the green bags come in, we'll receive 20 to, I think the most we've gotten is 28,000 pounds of food, 14 tons of food. Um, we always have on site 40 or 50 volunteers to receive that food, to weigh it, to sort it, to put it on the shelves. And as a result, our food bank goes from empty shelves to being full. Um, and then we have an inventory that will hold us for the next two months until the next food drive. When we started this, we were really focused on food. The idea was, how can we get more food to the food banks? One of the neighborhood coordinators, she said, I have a question. And she said, I go and I get food from my neighbors. They give me the food and then they thank me. What's that about? And that's when we realized that there was much more to this than we had first thought. It wasn't just about food, it was about building community. And it wasn't just about serving the people who were getting the food, it was about serving the people who were giving the food as well. And we realized this is a, a terrific thing. I mean, I've been in Ashland for four to five years now. Um, and we come to the food bank, you know, because food stamps don't last all month. Um, they've been really helpful in giving us you know, everything we need. It's pretty hard for the past three years. When you go to the store and you, you're doing your shopping, you go, oh, I'm a, I'm a member of the Ashton Food Project. I am going to buy some food for someone else today. And then you're actually going to touch the food and put it in the bag 
and then it's going to be delivered and somebody else can pick up your can of food and eat it. You know, it was like, that to me was powerful. <laughs> Buddy, this is tomato soup that has to be heated. You're remembering on a regular basis that there are people out there who need your help. Right. And every two months, having the reminder coming, saying, we're going to do another pickup. It's a reminder like, oh, right, people continue to be hungry and uh, not just at the holidays. So that was a big part. Getting the community involved was making it personal. And as far as being a volunteer that goes around, goes around and picks up the food, the neighborhood coordinators, it's one of those volunteer opportunities that is fantastic because in, in Ashland, for example, we have about 145 neighborhood coordinators that all go out and pick up their green bags on the same day every two months and they all stream into the food bank and there's just mountains of, of green bags and each one of those uh, persons is only taking two hours of their time every two months it's having a tremendous impact on the food bank. It's kind of a, a, a rare situation these days where you have an eight-year-old working alongside an 80-year-old. Besides that, a lot of food gets delivered, which is great, but uh, the you know the side benefits of this are tremendous and uh, it, it, for children uh, I've seen so many kids working there and they're smiling they're interacting with each other we try to you know get the kids out here every other month to uh, to volunteer and I think it's an incredibly rewarding experience for them and it does great work for the, for the community it's pretty astonishing when you when you think that you know nearly 25% of Ashland families volunteer for the food project. So it kind of speaks to the fact that, you know, people are very giving in town and it's, uh, it's, it's a great thing. Really happy to be a part of it. The Ashland Food Project or those magic green bags have really changed our community's perception and response to hunger. Um, over time, when you have families who participate month after month after month, it will change the perception of hunger on behalf of the children who are growing up in those families as contributing to the community's effort simply becomes part of day-to-day -day life. Nothing special, but something that we all come together to do together. And I think this is really a result of the environment these kids are living in who are fortunate enough to be in, in green bag homes. They are seeing their families, not irregularly, but rather every other month, putting out that green bag as a matter of course. We give, we contribute in a tangible way, in an ongoing way. And I think they will, as they grow and develop, they will bring that knowledge with them as a part of what they do and how they function as adults. So it, it's profound. I have a five-year-old and it's important to me to teach him service. And this is a very easy way for him to do it. And he can see how all of us have different lives and different circumstances. In Ashland, a core group of people recognized that hunger is the issue we wanted to address. Feeding our hungry neighbors was important to us. So we developed this solution, which we call the Green Bag Solution. And this way, having it all volunteer and all local, neighbors helping neighbors, we don't have to rely on any corporation or government entity or even a large nonprofit to come in and help feed our hungry neighbors. I think what the Food Project has done is it has allowed people's gestures from their heart to go directly into the support system for people in need. Usually that doesn't happen. Usually it gets tangled up in a bunch of bureaucratic and logistical problems. But here, every problem has just been an opportunity for the community to get better organized and express its creativity. The food project has, has gained momentum. It's a very positive thing for the people living here and it makes them feel good which is that's that's like the big secret you know obviously we're collecting food for people who need help at the food project but what people don't necessarily initially realize is that it makes them feel better when they participate the main thing we want to get across to other communities interested in doing something similar to this is you can do it it's really quite simple you just get together a dedicated core group of individuals that want to make a difference. And with our system or a similar system, you can take on anything. You can make a difference in your community.